In this video, we are going to have a look how we can detect colliders lying in a specific rectangular area. Unity gives three functions to do this. We will explore all these functions throughout this video. So let's get started. So here we are. I have very simple scene. You can see here. I have just one sprite which is a triangle polygon. It has just two components transform and a sprite renderer. Our first task is to draw some rectangle representing the area in which we want to detect the colliders and this visualization will help us to detect or debug our game. To do that we have to write a script go to create and go to C sharp script and now let's name it as custom debug. Now open it up in the visual studio reload it delete all this stuff and now this class is gonna be a static class so we have to write the static keyword this script is not gonna attach to any of our game object present in the scene therefore we don't need this derivation from mono behavior okay before writing some code let's understand some concepts in unity to represent a rectangular area we have to specify two points the first one is the top right corner let's a a comma b and the second one is the bottom left corner let's it x comma y with the help of these two points we can get a displacement vector from x comma y to a comma b to get the top left corner we have to take the projection of this diagonal vector in the y direction and then finally we have to multiply it to the y direction to get the actual top left corner and to get the bottom right corner we have to take the projection of this diagonal vector in the direction of positive x-axis and then finally multiply it with the unit vector of x-axis now you have got the concept first of all we have to write a function which will draw the rectangle for us it will take two parameters the first is of type vector 2 which is our top right corner and the second one is the vector 2 also which is our bottom left corner so let's zoom out a little bit so that you can have a better look so this function is going to be a public function and it will return nothing so let's name it a uh, draw rectangle okay it will take a vector 2 parameter called uh, top right corner and vector 2 also bottom left corner okay and we have to do some kind of calculation here the first we have to calculate the displacement vector is equals to top right corner minus bottom left corner and then we have to take the projection values of this displacement vector in the direction of positive y axis and x axis. Let's create a float variable which is x projection equals to vector 2 dot dot displacement vector. We have to take the projection of the displacement vector in the direction of positive x axis so let's write vector 2 dot write remember that it is a shorthand to write 1 comma 0 comma 0 in vector 3 notation in vector 2 it will be 1 comma 0 right so similar to this we have to do this with our y direction we have to take the projection in the y direction also we have to take the dot product of this displacement vector in the direction of y axis which is our up direction and uh, now it's time to create other two points so let's vector 2 this is our top left uh, corner let's new vector 2 x uh, projection multiplied by 0 0.5 0 0.5 and we have to be here negative because it is a left 
okay and now uh, y projection multiplied by 0 0.5 this will be positive because we have the top here okay and now for the bottom right corner let's x projection we have to keep it is positive because we have a right it is not left and now negative y projection because it is our bottom now we have all set up we have four points and now we can draw lines to each of the pairs or points with the help of gizmo functions so let's call gizmos dot draw line from top right corner to top left corner and then draw line from top left corner to bottom left corner and then also draw line from bottom left corner to bottom right corner okay and then draw line from bottom right corner to top right corner and now we all set up we have to call this function from outside this script let's go back to the unity and now unity has found an error and the error is that our function is not a static function so let's rectify it it must be a static one now the next step is to create a target script and that target script will be attached to this game object so let's hit add component button and now type the target create the new script create an add now open it up in the visual studio reload it delete all this stuff okay so here we will use that function that we have created in the custom debug class okay and we'll see that how it works so let's uh, create a function void on draw gizmos and now we have to call this function custom debug dot draw triangle okay now we have to pass the two parameters the first one is the top right corner and the second is the bottom left corner so we have to create two public variables one for the top right corner and the second is for the bottom left corner and the second for the bottom left corner for example public vector 2 top right corner the second vector 2 bottom left corner okay, let's write okay let's go back to the unity editor wait for compilation okay now let's set some values for example top right corner equals to 2 2 and minus 2 bottom left yes okay now you can see that it is working good now the one thing we have to note that uh, we are just creating a rectangle uh, which has the center at zero but what if if i some change some values for example like this or like this now you can see that this is not going to be a rectangle so what's happening here so you should note that these two points are with respect to the origins they are not have some kind of offset so we have to create some kind of offset so let's uh, offset or it can be also written as center offset equals to top right corner plus bottom left corner and multiplied by 0 0.5 actually this is the midpoint of these points right so 
we will have to offset this add this to our created points now let's recompile it and see what happens now it's working pretty much nice now we can play around with these values you will see that the rectangle will be adjusted according to all these values now the next step is to write some code for enemies but writing some code for enemies is not the part of this video therefore i will speed up during the writing the code for the enemy i will also provide the link to the source code of enemy in the description so make sure to check it out Now let's see okay they are following all right now it's time to check how the actual physics overlap works so let's write some more code go to the target script okay let's create our update method now the first function is physics to d the overlap area okay we have to pass the first point the top right corner and the second point the bottom left corner top right corner and the bottom left corner okay now it will return you can see here it will return collider 2d so we have to store this collider. Okay. Now we have to check for whether it is a null. Then debug dot log collider dot name. Okay. Let's run it. Now we have to focus more on the console window. Now you can see that the target 4 has entered and then target C, target 2 and target 1 and at last target 5. This is how the overlap area function works. There are few parameters also of this function uh, which are layer mask and mean depth and max depth. You can play around these things on your own. Okay. And now the second function comes in the overlap area all okay and it will return the array of collider 2ds so we have to type here square brackets if collider is not equals to null that means something or some colliders has entered to the region and then we have to list the names of all these colliders to do 
that let's for each collider to the goal in collider debug dot log call dot game object dot name okay let's clear the console window Now you can see that we have just only one elements and now you can see that all the lists are updating. This is how overlapping works. By overlapping you can detect any of this collider lying in the certain region. Unity provides many functions like this like overlap circles or many other functions also. If you look at the overlap area all function then there is also second version exist which is more efficient than that we have used here. So ultimately we have two versions, first is the overlap area all and overlap area non alloc So what's the difference in between of these functions? And now let's change this name to non alloc Okay. Now you can see that we have an error. Why is so? Because this function takes an extra parameter, which is the array buffer of collider 2d or we can say array of collider 2d in which this function will fill all the colliders that are lying in the region the advantage of doing this kind of thing is that whenever overlap function is called it doesn't have to recreate an array instead of that it can reuse that array we have passed into that function so let's create a collider 2d array private void start private collider to the results and this is obviously array results equals to name collider to d here we have to specify the maximum number of colliders that can be inside the area at a certain time and this array can store up to that maximum number of colliders so you must have to be very confident that you have specified the value is correct otherwise overflow would occur but for now let's it is 6 and then we have to pass this array of results into our function and you can see that this function will return integer that means it returns number of colliders lying in the region and now let's clear up this and now clear this also and now let's for integer and this function will return the number of colliders that has entered in this region okay so let's store it here the numbers num colliders equals to this one so we have to traverse through the i0 to num colliders and i plus plus and then debug dot log results i dot game object dot name. Let's see this whether it is works or not. Okay, that's working. You can see that in console window all the lists are updating. This is enough for this video and we will talk more about this kind of things in the later videos. So make sure to subscribe this channel and like and share. Thanks for watching.